Hello, and welcome back to Ultima 7, the Black Gate and Forge of Virtue. So we are in Britain, and we just caught up with our old pal, Lord British. Uh, he told us that he's got a bunch of our equipment that he's held on to. Um, if we go get the key in his study, and he also alluded to a second storeroom, um, and he was very vague and sort of tricksy about it, so we'll try to look more into that. We'll also um, talk to the people around the castle and maybe see if there's any goodies lying around. Uh, so this is a sundial, and I think it actually, yeah, we can use it to tell the time, so it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let's start at the top. Oh, who's that? You see a servant girl who looks at you in wonder. Thou dost look familiar. Who art thou? I'm Lugan. Oh, hello. I am Nell. What's your name? I told thee my name is Nell. Yes, you did. What's your job? I am a chambermaid. I am responsible for keeping the castle tidy. Just a servant girl, really. Servant girl? I suppose I'll always be a servant. My parents are servants. My brother is a servant. My fiancé is a servant. My child will probably be a servant. Okay. Uh, your child? Nell looks worried. Shh! I do not want anyone to know. It is not showing yet, is it? Kurokio and I are getting married as soon as possible. He is the father, I think. Then again, I could be... Or it could be... No, probably not him. Or it could be... Hmm... That would be interesting. Wait, what am I saying? The father is most definitely Kurokio. How many people have you slept with, Nell? Please do not tell anyone. It would be embarrassing, all right? Mm, sure. I know I can trust thee, Lugan. Well, we just met, so... It remains to be seen, maybe. Uh, tell me about your fiancé. Kurokio, is it? That would be Kurokio, that dear man who runs the Punch and Judy show. He writes the loveliest love poetry. We are getting married as soon as Kurokio can afford a wedding ring. And tell me about your brother. Thou mightest run into him. He is also a servant in the castle. Charles. Other than not being as smart as I am, he's all right. For a bumbling ass, that is, she laughs. And your parents? They work in the castle as well. Boots is my mother. Benny is my father. They have been here for years. I was born in this castle, and I played in the nursery. And what do you think of the castle? It is, a, it is very large. Keeps me very busy. Thou wouldst not believe how dusty it gets. Uh, I'd believe it. All right. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Lugan. The throne room. Uh, this is Lord British's room, I believe. Fancy double bed. Anything fun in here? A couple of books. What do you read, British? Everything an avatar should know about sex. Okay. And the biography of Britannia's longtime ruler, Lord British, by Ken Benos. While many remember that Lord British was once but, but one of eight monarchs back when the lands were known as Caesarea, few are aware that he is not even a native of our own lovely Britannia. His origin is from another world, one which he entered ours by way of a red moon gate. In fact, it is through the same type of gate that the Avatar of Legend purportedly enters Britannia. As ruler, one of the eight, uh, as ruler of one of the eight kingdoms, he was instrumental in selecting a champion to face Mondane, Minax, and Exodus. When the terrible machine Exodus was defeated, twas Lord British behind whom all the people of Caesarea rallied. The unified land became known as Britannia, with Lord British as the sole monarch. Though never let it be said he rules with a tyrannical hand, his reign has always been one of truth, love, and courage, supported by his utmost belief in the eight virtues. It was Lord British who had the insight to call forth a, a quest for the Avatar, whom also happened to be the champion from the, from the days of Caesarea, and who gave prosperity and happiness unto the people. Then came his mysterious disappearance when the stranger who became the Avatar was called by his companions to aid in the search for the lost monarch. Note how Lord Blackthorne, affected by the Shadowlands, quickly turned Britannia's fair lands into a place of terror. 
but find our noble lord, the Avatar did, and Britannia was restored, its former peaceful state. Then came the gargoyles, and our honorable sovereign thoughtfully requested the return of the Avatar. So I think that's referencing... Well, I, I know it's referencing previous games. Uh, I don't know the game very well before Ultima 6, and even that one I don't know as well. Um, so I couldn't tell you uh, very much about all that uh, lore. I have read about it before and played through some of it, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, which one was that? That was the smaller one. And the key to the Black Gate. The pages bound within this book contain well-documented clue information from the invaluable sources at Origin Systems. Which is, of course, the makers of the game. They, this game's pretty good for that, for like breaking the fourth wall, if that's really a thing in video games. It's very self-referential and um, throws a lot of fun little Easter eggs, I guess, in there. And the cool thing about this castle is that there's this secret passageway behind everything. I don't know if it's secret or not, but so you can move through the walls to get around the perimeter of the castle. Let's head down this way. What does this one open up? The guest bedroom or whatever this is, I don't know. We've got some food. A genie lamp, no a light source. And we'll leave the food. Let's check out the books. The Five Stages of Lawn Care by A.P. Burke. This is the brilliant and witty depiction of, a, of the humorous antics of two young boys during one hairy, very hot summer in Britannia. From courting to practicing swordplay, the duo never seem to be able to avoid trouble. Though the boys grow up by the end of the story, they don't quite seem to lose all of their youthful instinct. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I always forget which book I just read. And the next one, What a Fool Believes. Within the pages of this book is the story of a bard, a blonde, and a bottle. The perfect combination for a classic tale of the war between the sexes. By J.P. Nolan, I think that was. James P. Nolan. You see a young peasant with a tray of wine glasses. Hello. I am Charles. What do you do? I'm a servant in Lord British's castle. I serve as a gentleman's gentleman, among other things. Right now I am serving wine. Wine? Wouldst thou like some wine? Sure. It is on the house. Charles hands you and your friends glasses of wine. Servant. My family has been employed by Lord British for many years. My father, Benny, once held the position I now hold. Oh, so you're the brother of Nell? He is the head servant. I shall be head servant one day. I suppose then perhaps my sweetheart will love me. Sweetheart? Charles sighs. He is clearly smitten. She is Jeanette. She works in the Blue Boar. But I am afraid I am not up to her standards. I believe she has her eyes set on someone else. I do not know what to do about it. Tell me about Jeanette. She does not love me. I know. She would rather marry a rich man. I have not a chance. And tell me about your family. Thou wilt encounter them. My mother cooks in the kitchen. My my prudish sister is the chamber, chambermaid. And that's Nell. She's engaged to the carousel manager. It's hard to get used to. I, I have always been overly protective of my little sister. I would wager she has never even been kissed. Not even by Kurokio. That is mainly because I have looked after her all this time. Yeah. You're, you're probably right. We'll just leave. Well, yeah, of course. I would smite anyone who laid a hand on her. Besides, Nell has always been chaste and prudish. Mm. Oh, did you say something, Olo? No? No. Uh, must have been. Never mind. Must be hearing things. Yeah, of course. She would never think to allow a man to kiss her. No, certainly not. You're right. Uh, so I guess that's probably what she's asked me not to tell him. Um, I won't do it yet. I might come back and do it later. We'll see. Charles nods his head at you, then goes about his business. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, and this is Lord British's study, hence the books on the table. And this is where he mentioned the key uh, to his storeroom was. Of course, there it is. I'll take that. 
glance at his books. How to Conquer the World in Three Easy Steps by Maximilian the Amazingly Mean. Found within are the ravings of a deranged megalomaniac cleric describing his plans for the domination of Britannia. And after I have acquired the vast corpse spell, th there will be no one to defy me, for all will fear my casting of the spell. Even the loft Lord Brit himself will offer his obese obeisance to me. Up is out by Goodfellow. Herein is discussed the most current theories on gravity and mass. After years of study and research, the authority finally put the fruits of his labor down in the pages of this tome, which includes his discussion on falling apples. No Way to Jump by Desmond. Herein lies the compilation that discusses various elements found in adventure stories. In addition to an evaluation of their literary worth, one, one essay demonstrates how to apply such elements in other styles. Last one, I think. The Day It Didn't Work by A. Allen G. This collection of essays details the difficulties in overseeing a group of well-meaning misfits in a, in, a, in a mechanical environment, especially when the overseer is a misfit as well. I think I got them all right. Oh, way to jump. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I did miss this one. And this is the sequel to the one I just read, so... Well, that was actually accidental, but... Uh, no One Leaves by A. Allen J., the sequel to The Day It Didn't Work. This short tome offers insight to why new mechanical contraptions don't always function at the time agreed upon between mechanism and overseer, despite how constructed they may appear. In addition, the work discusses how to handle presenting the complaints to the tinkerers who worked on them and how to persuade them to finish the work regardless of how tired they are and how late in the evening it is. All right, that's the study. Trend, one, two, three, four, <clears throat> up to 17. This autobiography penned by the obtuse mage reveals Trend's life in all, of, in all of his incarnations as he continually strove to possess more powerful beings. A Complete Guide to Britannian Minerals, Precious and Semi-Precious Stones by B. Ledbetter. Herein, one can find the descriptions of a plethora of rocks and gems. One can find lead in a variety of veins. While a common ore, or while a common ore lead is used with such frequency in items such as horseshoes that it is a valuable material to pr procure. Gold is quite rare. Though generally without function, gold has maintained its worth by its very rarity. The refined form is so full of shine that many give it to their lovers as tokens of affection. It is, w it is a well-known rumor that one who loves enough to give gold loves enough to remain true. Black rock is an odd substance, only recently discovered. The there seems to be little interest in it, and even less use for it. A small handful of experimenters have noticed it as a profound effect on magic though these some re same researchers refuse to comment on what exactly the material does. Oh, interesting. That might... seems informative for later. Hello. You see your old friend Nystel, now a decrepit old man in mage's robes. He seems lost in thought, far away. Hello, Nystel. The mage looks confused a moment. My name is Nystel? Yes, that is it. What, uh, well, tell me about your job. Well, I used to perform quite a bit of magic, he says apologetically. At least, I think I used to do so. There is a man named Lord British, I think. I work for him. Tell me about British. Lord who? Dost thou mean that old man who sometimes sits on the throne? Uh, tell me about magic. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doth not. He waves his hand and drops his wand. Oops! He cries as he bends to pick it up. Oops, he cries as he bends to pick it up. Art thou sure this man is not really the jester? Anyway, as I was saying... Um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, magic. I can still sell thee some spells or reagents if thou wouldst like. 
we don't have a spell book or anything yet, so we won't do that. Doesn't seem so bad. Goodbye. Are we going somewhere? Okay. We'll be back later, Nystal, and we will buy some spells from you. This must be your room. Wait, did you just lock us in? It's kind of, kind of creepy. This, I assume, is the same person. Yes. His name I forget already. Charles. Anything in here? Light source doesn't look. Oh, books. Can't forget to read the books. 101 Ways to Cheat at Nim by Dr. Cat. <clears throat> Within the pages of this tome are all the many ways to earn supplementary gold by gambling at Nim. Written by the orig originator of the game himself, this book covers in-depth such strategies as claw first, questions later, and there are no ways to skin a cat. I'm sure there's probably a lot of references in these books that I don't understand. Uh, I think there's a lot of inside jokes in them, too, in the creators of the game. Anyways, it doesn't matter if I don't know them. You guys might, if anybody ever actually watches this. Uh, Memto Rays, a qualitative study in, in metaparaphilosophical meta radiation. <clears throat> cool word, by Memto. I wonder if that's a real word. Despite Felkrinen's theory of 0335, there are indeed rays of energy that constantly bombard Britannia. In fact, these very same rays permeate of all the known space between Britannia and the stars. Recent experimenters have proven that, me that my theory that these rays, known hereafter as Mempto rays, are lethal to all non-living matter. Lethal to non-living matter? In fact, Mempto rays have demonstrated their ability numerous times, once killing an entire boulder in a matter of a few hours. It is my recommendation... Oh, that's funny. I, I guess I got there a little bit ahead. I should have just finished reading. Uh, I haven't read these books basically ever, so... A lot of it catches me off guard, and I misread a lot of things, too. Oh, just having some pancakes with your parrot, eh? No, oh, it's a cake, not pancakes. What is all this stuff? Bookshelf. Sleeping powder. Uh, I won't take the sleeping powder. Trophy. Let us play the game. Not right now. Since we're at the bottom of the perimeter now, six o'clock if you will, uh, we will continue going through the walls and go up towards our gear. Or British's gear anyways. got a jail up here. At least you got the penthouse. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see a thoroughly disheartened young man who is miserably languishing behind the bars. Hello. I'm Weston. Weston? I thought that name sounds familiar. I have no job so long as I am left to rot here in this prison. Thy job is to pay for the crime thou hast committed. Why are you in prison? My crime was stealing apples from the royal orchards. This I did, and I admit it freely. If given the same set of circumstances, I would do it again. Aha! Not only an unrepentant, unrepentant criminal, but also a potential professional thief. Looks like this one has ended in the right place and just in the nick of time. Nick o time. What were your circumstances? I'm not from Britain, my lord. I'm from Paws, and it's another reason why they believe I can be trifled with. Oh, you're, um, Alina's husband. This prisoner is from Paws. I bloody knew it. To his credit, he was in town nearly an entire day before he stole something. For a citizen of Paws, that is, an honest, that is as honest as they come. Jeez. Tell me how you really feel. 
Uh, tell me about Paz. Paz is a town to Paz is a town where thou mayest feel the icy grip of poverty about thine heart. Jeez, oh, that was pretty deep. Oh bloody hell! Now I suppose he's going to go and tell us his whole pathetic life story. Couldst thou wait until I get out of my get out my handkerchief so I do not interrupt thee with all my wailing? Poverty. I do not wish to bemoan my fate, but my family lives in Paws. My wife Alina and my child Cassie. They were, they were starving, and I came to Britain to get food for them. Oh, now, do not go and bring up poverty as an excuse as to why thou hast turned to crime. My father was so poor, he and his family had to eat dirt, but he still raised me proper. Beat the stuffings out of me if he ever so much as imagined I did anything wrong. I could tell thee that. Starving. Although there are fools who will speak otherwise, the people of Britannia are being crushed by the vicious tyranny of the class system. While a few, while a few have more than they could ever enjoy, there are more who go to sleep hungry every night. My wife and daughter, to name two of them. Oh, that reminds me. It is nearly time for my meal break. The trout is supposed to be delicious today at the farmer's market. Man. This guy's rough. Class, uh, so you're saying there's a class system. While I'm certain Lord British is a just and fair ruler, he must be quite unaware of all that goes on in his kingdom. Surely he would not tolerate such inequity. All right, that is enough noise out of me. All day long, yakada yakada about the awful, terrible class system. Why, the next thing thou knowest, thou shalt be saying society is to blame for thy crimes. Not a word from anybody about any appreciation for keeping the laws in order. No, of course not. But all the pity in the world for the dangerous lawbreakers who are the real threat to society. Wouldst thou speak with Lord British about me? I would bet that he is completely unaware of my case. Please, wilt thou speak with him? Yes. Oh, I thank thee, Avatar. My fate and the fates of my wife and daughter are in thine hands. Jeez, you got a lot to say. Fools like our good friend the guard would have us believe that nothing has changed in Britannia for over 200 years. That we can live our lives as if all of our problems do not exist. I say to thee that it is people like that who cause our problems in the first place. Tell me about your family. I do not want any mercy for myself. I have admitted my guilt, but my life does not only belong to myself. It belongs to my wife and family as well. Without me, they will suffer unbearable hardships such as they might not survive. Not so long ago, Paws was a thriving, rustic, coastal village, but as Britain grew larger, most of our local businesses moved there. We became a farming town, and the seven-year drought gave us a lashing that we have yet to recover from. Stealing out. I'd offered to buy them first, but Fig, the caretaker of the orchard, set an exorbitant price, which I'm certain he would have pocketed for himself. So yes, I admit to stealing them. See how the common criminal blames his type of immoral behavior on others, all while the while while displaying it in himself? This one is irredeemable, he is. Fig? Fig sounds like a dick. He gives baskets of fruit free to the fellowship without Lord British's consent, I'm quite certain. Thou shouldst not listen to this obvious slander, my lord, it is hearsay. And admit. Mine only regrets are that I did not try to steal something bigger and that I did not get away with it. <laughs> my only regret is that I didn't get away with it. Okay, I'll see what I can do there. Uh, I forget your name already. I thank thee for visiting me. I guess the plan is just to lock him up for life after stealing apples. Sounds like a pretty messed up judicial system. Uh, here's a storeroom. Whoops. No, we're not going to fight anything. Not yet, anyways. We haven't even had to fight anything. Oh, right. Because I accepted the wine. I forgot that any time you uh, accept 
uh, like food or drink or anything like that for your whole party, that you actually end up with the items in your inventory, even if it's food. They don't just feed them, they, they give you the food. Uh, whoops. Alright. Need that anymore. So, let's see what we got. Actually, may as well keep that open. Uh, we got a spell book, which I will use frequently. Uh, bedroll. I guess I can hold on to the bedroll. Um, no, you know what? Let's give it to Spark. Spark's going to carry our, like, survival equipment, our torches and the bedroll and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, all my reagents. Oh, won't fit. Oh, right. Uh, all right. Well, let's get rid of the potions for now. We'll give them to Sentry, but he won't hold on to them. Sentry's going to carry any extra weapons that we have. Weapons and armor, like this two-handed sword, for example, which I should pr maybe just give to Shimino. I think I'm just going to give it to Shimi. So Sentry can hold on to the Morning Star. Better find him some armor before I get him using a two handed sword. What's this? Did I do. Oh, I didn't take my reagents. Because they wouldn't fit. They still won't fit. What's this? This is the ship. Indeed, uh, let's give that to Iolo as well. Is that what it is? I should have been actually read it. Yeah, so that's our deed to Lord British's ship, which is currently moored? Is that the right word? In Vesper? Give me a break. Let's give that to Sentry 2. There we go. I want three agents. And let's see if there's anything else. Oh, some gold. We're going to take the bag as well. I'm going to put the potions that we have in this bag. Oh, fit. Why won't anything fit? That doesn't seem right. I don't need this anymore. Oh, right. Uh, this is a healing potion, so I'm going to leave it in there, because that'll be my, <coughs> excuse me, healing bag. Ooh, some magic boots. That's fun. Our first magic equipment of the, the game. Magic uh, are lighter than regular... Um, like armor, or regular armor that you would have, and I th think the boots, I'm not sure if the boots also have the protection that uh, from the swamp, that they, you get from the swamp boots or not, I don't know, uh, and I believe they also give you better armor, so they're way better, obviously. Definitely take the food. Is that it? I think that's it. Um, obviously there's the kite shield here. Uh, it's, I'm, oh man, I am just awful at this block thing. Um, I don't know if the kite shield is better. Or, I'll just give it to Sentry. Not sure if the kite shield is better than my spiked shield. I'll have to look into that. Okay. And that's one storeroom. Let's see what's on the other side. Here, 
jail. This one is empty. What does that sound? Someone's practicing their archery, it sounds like. What's up here? Ooh. Well, that looks good. But it doesn't look like there's a door. Hmm. Must be some other way in. Um, anyways, that's in, that's a good place to stop for now. Uh, we'll pick back up uh, exploring the castle and uh, and seeing what other fun items we can find.